for builders. Is John out of his tiny mind? Or is it a useful metaphor? Well, I think it's a useful metaphor, obviously. I also think it's a bit funny, which I like, as you know. Now, it's a metaphor for what I like to call relationship marketing, which you should be doing hard, get it, if you do work for other businesses, if your customers are other businesses rather than, you know, retail consumers. They call it business to business marketing sometimes or B2B marketing. Now, it's not the only way to market to other businesses, but it is a very powerful way and possibly the most powerful way to market a trade business to business customers. Now, you can have a few types of business customer. I'm going to th go through a couple of examples for you. For construction subcontractors like electricians and plumbers and bricklayers and tilers and jip rockers and all those and roofers, it might be builders. You're going to do business to business marketing to builders. I mean ringing them people up, right, and building relations. For builders, even if you do work for retail customers, it could be architects who often have the customer first or who often are very influential in who the customer chooses. But it can also be developers, it can be commercial customers like your restaurants and your shops and your retail chains and your shopping centers and your hotels and your building managers and strata managers. For maintenance trades, plumbers, electricians, property maintenance guys, air conditioning guys. It might be strata managers, property managers, building managers and businesses as well, like nursing homes and shops and factories, etc. Is this making sense? You should know if you do business with other businesses, you know, repeating business, you should know who your potential or desirable customers are. Now there's a reason this marketing is so important for you. Most of the time, these businesses are not out there looking for suppliers like you. They've either already got one or got some, some relationships in place, or when they do have a need, there's someone else, not you, knocking on the door. So unless you're also knocking on the door, you're probably going to miss out, right? You're not going to get a look in. They're not in any meaningful way hitting Google and searching for your trade and go, oh, I really need a plumber. I mean, I'm sure it happens, but mostly it doesn't happen. They've already got relationship or there are other people trying to build those relationships. So your job, if you want to do business with those people, is to build and then maintain relationships with some or some more of your chosen businesses, right? You've probably got some already. Of course you have far without some. But if you want to grow, and especially if you want to protect yourself from shrinking, should the market change, you need some more. Back to our You need to contact them and do something nice. Maybe a I don't mean real ones. They're metaphorical. You need to do something nice or something useful. You need to start to get to know each other start to build a relationship, start to establish trust both ways. That cuts both ways, just like with a You need to decide whether you like each other. It's important for blowjobs too, isn't it? Your customer needs to know, like, and trust you or you and your business before they'll buy. And you need to know, like, and trust them before you will do work for them, right? Because you're putting money and effort out there before you get paid as well. So you need to know, like, and trust each other before you commit to this thing, just like with a Enough about the joke only goes so far, doesn't it? So back to relationship marketing. You need to identify the businesses you want to work with and the people in them that you need to be talking to, the people who can give you work, which is often more than one. You need to make contact and you need to start getting to know each other. You need to keep making contact and being useful and nice and generous and helpful, but not pestering, until an opportunity arises for them to ask you for a quote or to do some work. You need to be patient and keep going if you don't win your first opportunities and keep talking to them so you can get to a point where you can win one. Okay, that's quite important. You need to understand what's going on and whether you're genuinely getting opportunities or whether you're just being used to price check the person they really want to give the business to. And you need to be in there in the relationship, sort of present when an opportunity appears, when a current provider fucks up or has no capacity, it's all too busy, or they fall out, or they're unavailable, or for any other, any of a number of other reasons that could mean that they look for someone else. Okay, you need to kind of be around. And you need to track your interactions and plan your next calls so you remember to call people regularly and remember what you said last time. You need to think of interesting things to say and kind of reasons or excuses to call them. Right? It gets old real quick if you call every month going, have you got anything for me to quote on yet? So don't do that. Now, if you're doing this on a large scale, you'd use a customer relationship management software package or service and they're quite complex and difficult. So if you're doing it on a large scale, you'd use one of them. But if you have, I don't know, less than 50 businesses that you're wanting to work with a spreadsheet or something, it's fine, that would be overkill. A simpler tracker would do the trick. My clients use a relationship marketing tracker, which is a spreadsheet we've set up to make it easy for them to use it. It's got two tabs, one for existing relationships that you need to look after, and one for potential new relationships that you'd like to build. So put your hands up if you'd like a copy, we'd happily send it to you, and happy See ya.